Dead by Daylight recently ended their four issue comic book run detailing the origin story of the Legion, and it's pretty good. While it doesn't necessarily break any new ground, it takes a backstory that we all know and adds a little bit of extra lore to the stories of Frank Morrison, Julie Kostenko, Susie Lavoie, and Joey. And as your third favorite DVD lore content creator, I took it upon myself to get and read these issues to talk about it and review it. The four issue series was written by Nadia Shamas with the art done by Dylan Snook and Emilio Leche, and I wanted to make it clear that this is not meant to be a replacement for reading it, so I'll link it in the description so you can go buy this comic book series if you want it. Dead by Daylight issue one came out in June of 2023 and centers on Frank Morrison and starts with a dream sequence. We see Frank's Legion persona going on a stabbing spree at a train station and then he approaches Frank and hands him the knife that he used to do it. Frank is woken up at the train station in Ormond, Alberta by a man named Clive and is taken home to live with his new foster father. Frank has been moved around from foster home to foster home ever since he was six years old. While he was charismatic, charming, and a good basketball player, Frank kind of threw away all of his goodwill with society and his future prospects by being a complete hooligan. And so Clive is the latest in a long string of caretakers that Frank has lived with. Clive provides a roof over Frank's head and in return Frank's existence gets Clive governmental assistance money that he uses on beer. For some reason, this 19-year-old goes to the local high school and chats up the first girl he sees, who happens to be Julie Kostenko, who's sitting on a park bench and sketching. He's impressed by her artwork and assumes that that means that she's a free thinker. She's incredibly turned on by his stunning good looks and his t-shirt that looks like it was plucked off of Sid from Toy Story, and so they chatted up for about an hour until Julie's best friend, Susie Lavoie, shows up, and she's angry because she's been waiting on Julie for over an hour. Julie leaves with her, but not before inviting Frank to her house for a party that night. At the party, Julie introduces Frank to Joey and Susie, and Frank suggests that they ditch the party, even though it's at Julie's house. They start drinking outside and play Truth or Dare, and like an absolute cringe lord, Frank dares himself to kiss Julie. Susie appears to be really sad at this, and when it's her turn to do truth or dare, Frank asks Susie what her biggest fear is, and Susie says, I'm afraid I'm going to die alone, that no one really knew me. Which is some foreshadowing to an issue 4 reveal. They end the night by tagging their school, stealing a police car, lighting another car on fire, and somehow getting away with all of that. And that's the end of issue 1. What I like about this comic book series is it gets a little bit more personal with every member of the Legion, shows what drives them and what the entity might want from them since the entity feeds off of emotion. Frank's motivation for joining the Legion is that he feels that society is counter-programming to human nature and the system does not deserve to continue in its current form. The entity probably likes the chaos that he causes and has him thinking that all the survivors in Dead by Daylight are part of the society that he hates. Dead by Daylight issue 2 came out in August of 2023 and focuses on Julie Kostenko. It starts with yet another dream sequence in which Julie and Frank go on a killing spree and make out while covered in the blood of their victims. As lovers do, you know. Julie wakes up in her bed. It's revealed that she has two great parents who love her and think that she's just the bee's knees. This is in stark contrast to all the other Legion members who have some sort of major family issue. Susie gives Julie a ride to school and they talk about Frank and Julie Julie promises that Frank is not replacing Susie and that she would never ditch her for him. The second they get out of the car, Frank is there and Julie ditches Susie for him. As she hugs Susie goodbye, there are lingering shots of Julie's hand placement on Susie and then it cuts to Susie looking really sad and contemplative. They're being about as subtle as a sledgehammer with how Susie feels about Julie, but we'll let that simmer until the big reveal and then we'll act surprised when it happens. Here we get a little bit of lore around the Mount Ormond Resort. The lodge was abandoned after an accident caused 13 people to fall into a bottomless hole. Julie theorizes that it wasn't an accident and that it was actually a human sacrifice done by a secret cult. This checks out with DVD lore in the sense that the locations where people get taken by the entity are called fractures, where our world overlaps with the entity's realm, and fractures are theorized to be created by the entity's cult, most commonly known as the Black Veil. And Julie goes on to talk about how there's been a global rise in cult-related sacrifices, and she believes that they're all connected into one big cult. So she's, she's onto something, like she cracked the case of Dead by Daylight's real world situation. The four friends have a ritual called Legion Night, where they go rent a horror movie, watch it together, and then one of them gets to pick what kind of crazy crimes they're going to do that night. The cashier at the video store is Jeff Johansson, a student at their school who shares an algebra class with Julie, Susie, and Joey. He also gets taken by the entity as a survivor in Dead by Daylight, though that's probably a good 20 or so years later. Another fun Dead by Daylight lore tidbit is the movie that they rent is based on Max Thompson Jr., who is known as the Hillbilly in DVD. Much like how the Hillbilly left his mark on the world and had movies made about him, Julie wants the four friends to become legends. She creates masks for them all to wear for their future nights of debauchery that would hopefully instill fear in the citizens of Ormond and seal their icon status for their community. And that's where issue 2 ends. This issue shows that for Julie, joining the Legion was her way of leaving her mark. Despite having a healthy family life and being a smart kid who does well in school, 
Julie feels the town of Ormond smothers her potential and she's obsessed with leaving her legacy. In a sense, Julie and Frank have these vanity driven motives for being in the Legion and this really manifests itself further down the line. Issue 3 of the Dead by Daylight comics came out in October of 2023 and it focuses on Joey. If I were to ask you what it starts with, you might be inclined to think that it's a dream sequence. And you'd be right. His dream starts in the locker room and he can't find his mascot outfit for the big game. Joey's Legion persona has left a wake of dead bodies that normal Joey follows until he reaches the beaver mascot suit, at which point spidery legs erupt from it and attack Joey. He wakes up in his bed, shaves his head, and goes to talk to his mom, who just got off of a graveyard shift. She lets him know that he was screaming in his sleep yet again. It turns out that the night terrors and Joey's baldness are linked to him having severe anxiety. He rips out his own hair because he gets so anxious and then decides that it's better to just shave it all off. The next scene of this issue is probably the most pivotal in the series. Joey meets with Frank at a diner, and Frank is trying to convince Joey to up the ante with the next Legion night. Frank is a little frustrated that Susie and Joey keep picking fun misdemeanors instead of like hardcore felonies for their Legion Knights. He calls Joey's manhood into question, citing that Joey doesn't take the Legion seriously enough, and that he's been dragging his feet with asking Susie out, which, good luck with that buddy. Joey snaps just a little bit and says, I can't get mad like you, Frank, the rules aren't the same. Frank picks up on the racial subtext here and uses it to his advantage. Knowing that being discriminated against is a pain point for Joey, Frank pockets a candy bar in front of Joey's boss when they get to his workplace. Joey didn't see this, but his boss did, and his boss ends up firing him over it. He brings up that the way that Joey's brothers turned out should have been a good enough reason to have never hired Joey. There's a really well illustrated series of panels here where Joey is ranting about the situation to his friends, and it shows his heart rate increasing in the background. Joey decides that he wants to use Legion Knight to pull a prank on the store owner in retaliation for firing him, but Frank and Julie start riling him up and they pretty much imply that the boss came up with a fake reason to fire Joey because he was racist, as opposed to being because Frank stole a candy bar. This shows a manipulative side to Frank that he would take Joey's insecurities and use them against him to get what he wants. The riling up works and Joey decides to do something more extreme. They go to the store to completely smash the merchandise and then Julie gets caught by a janitor. End of issue three. Issue three makes me sad the more that I think about it. Joey seemed like a good kid. He was just frustrated and he had the odds stacked against him. For one reason or another, his brothers had placed a reputation on his family that immediately made people discredit whatever good Joey did, and Frank used that to get Joey on his side. Obviously, Joey's decisions are ultimately his own, but it's still a bit of a bummer. This issue also highlights that Joey's main motivation was a release for his pent-up anger and anxiety. However, unlike Frank and Julie, Joey was actively taking into account why he shouldn't participate in massive crime sprees. Most notably, his mother who only had him to depend on. The final issue of the Dead by Daylight comics came out in March of 2024 after several delays, and this one focuses on Susie Lavoie. This one decides to break the pattern before by starting with a dream sequence. Susie is beating the snot out of her abusive father when her own Legion persona attacks her. Susie flees her Legionized clone and finds Julie, who just starts kissing on her. So, oh my gosh, Susie is gay for Julie. Let's act surprised. However, the makeout session is cut short when Dream Julie stabs Susie in the gut, saying that violence is the only way that she knows how to be happy. Susie wakes up in class screaming, she steps out to take a smoke break, and she's greeted by Jeff Johansson. Jeff warns her about Julie, saying that she's not a nice person and that Susie is too good for her hooligan friends. It's very interesting here that Jeff also lumped Joey in with Julie and Frank, showing that Joey truly lives in the shadow of his brother's reputation. The scene cuts back to the convenience store with Julie being held captive by the brave janitor who values his boss's merchandise over his own life. Susie is about to take off her mask and try to defuse the situation and give herself up before Frank Leroy Jenkinses himself into the situation and plunges his knife in the guy's back. He hands the knife to Julie who then stabs him through the bottom of the mouth and at this point the guy is more dead than pretty much any asymmetrical horror game that's not dead by daylight. However, Frank tells the other two, Joey and Susie, that they have to join in and stab the corpse because this is the legacy that they all wanted. Joey's reluctant because he doesn't want to break his mother's heart and be the type of person that the community already thinks that he is, but Frank is like, no, 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 Joey, we're your family now, and Joey's convinced. Then Susie still refuses until Julie puts the knife in her hand and stabs the guy with her. At the Mount Ormond Ski Lodge, they bury the body and plan to flee to Montana when they're surrounded by a fog. Frank goes to investigate a noise but does not come back. Julie and Joey both go and Susie is left alone. If you remember back to issue one, Susie said that her biggest fear is dying alone with nobody knowing who she truly is. And here Susie is confronted with that fear head on. Her friends are gone and she doesn't want to follow them into the fog. However, Julie comes back, now wearing her Legion mask, and is accompanied by Frank and Joey. 
Julie tells Susie that this is the only way that she knows how to be happy, and Susie, not wanting to let her friend down and not wanting to be alone, confesses her love to Julie and joins her friends in the fog. Much like issue three, this one's also a massive bummer to me. As Frank used Joey's insecurities to manipulate him, Julie takes advantage of Susie's undying loyalty to her. Susie's a good kid with a bad family life and was clinging onto whatever buoy she could find, which just so happened to be Julie, one of the most toxic people in all of Ormond. I really enjoyed the four issue Legion comics run. While it is, in essence, just a rehashing of the same Dead by Daylight lore that we've already heard but with a few retcons, it adds in enough spice to give it that extra little je ne sais quoi. <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing here. It serves to enrich and add depth to the four characters. I ended up finishing the run hating Frank Morrison more and for more reasons. I saw Julie in a new light, not a good one, and I felt more sympathetic towards Joey and Susie. The biggest complaint that I've seen about this run on the internet is that people felt like it didn't give a reason to view the Legion as a believable camaraderie. I can kind of agree with that. I think the Legion's dynamic is mostly two manipulators and two vulnerable people who either don't see that they're being manipulated or are too scared of what happens if they cut themselves loose. Don't get me wrong, I think the four friends do care about each other and it shows on the pages, but there's that underlying toxicity to it all that just kind of tarnishes it. All in all, I think the series was a good foray into a new medium for the Dead by Daylight universe, and I'd love to see more of it. If it were up to me to decide, the next one would be a suburban noir comic book series detailing the escapades of Danny Johnson, otherwise known as Dead by Daylight's Ghostface. You'd see him cautiously stalk his prey for weeks if not months before striking, or the other thing I'd like to see is a manga of Kazan Yamaoka, otherwise known as the Oni in Dead by Daylight. But what do you think? Have you read the Legion comics? Do you plan to? And what future comics would you like to see? But anyway, thank you guys so much for watching, and I want to give a special shout out to my patrons. They are Fake Milk, Sinner, Marsh, and Brotac. Patrons get to see all my videos at least a day or two early everything that goes on YouTube or TikTok. They also get voting rights to choose what my topics are going to be for future videos. So if that interests you, the link is in the description. And if not, I still appreciate you. I hope you guys have a nice day.